Welcome to the Biotech Whisperer channel. Our topic today is on an introduction to molecular biology. If you are new here, we are a group of retired professors sharing bite-sized videos. Let's continue with our topic. Molecular biology is a branch of science concerning biological activity at the molecular level and studies the molecular basis of biological activity. Molecular biologists conduct experiments to investigate the structure, function, processing, regulation and evolution of biological molecules and their interactions with one another which leads to the provision of micro-level insights into how life works. Questions we may ask include but not limited to the following. What are the underlying principles that define life? How do organisms develop and respond to their environments in an organized fashion? How does life evolve? How can we translate our molecular understanding into novel therapies? The field of molecular biology overlaps with biology and chemistry and in particular, genetics and biochemistry. Although there are many kinds of molecules or biopolymers in every living thing, most molecular biologists focus on genes and proteins. A key area of molecular biology concerns understanding how various cellular systems interact in terms of the way DNA, RNA and protein synthesis function. The central dogma of molecular biology is a theory stating that genetic information flows only in one direction, from DNA, to RNA, to protein, or RNA directly to protein. As the process in which the genetic information flows from DNA to RNA in a process called transcription, to make a functional product protein after the messenger RNA is translated and folded. Often post-translational modification is involved. So, let us start with the first step. Genes are segments of information stored on gigantic nucleic acid molecules. They are referred to as a unit of heredity which is transferred from a parent to offspring and is held to determine some phenotypic characteristic of the offspring, also termed as trait. On the other hand, Genes get expressed in functional gene products termed as proteins or molecules in their own right. These make both of these substances, and the relationship between them, extraordinarily important to study. Transcription is the process by which the information is transferred from one strand of the DNA to RNA by the enzyme RNA polymerase. The DNA strand which undergoes this process consists of three parts namely promoter, structural gene, and a terminator. The DNA strand that synthesizes the RNA is called the template strand and the other strand is called the coding strand. The DNA-dependent RNA polymerase binds to the promoter and catalyzes the polymerization in the 3' to 5' direction. As it approaches the terminator sequence, it terminates and releases the newly synthesized RNA strand. The newly released RNA strand further undergoes post-transcriptional modifications. Translation is the process by which the RNA codes for specific proteins. It is an active process which requires energy. This energy is provided by the charged tRNA molecules. Ribosomes initiate the translation process. The ribosomes consist of a larger subunit and a smaller subunit. The larger subunit, in turn, consists of two tRNA molecules placed close enough so that peptide bond can be formed at the expense of enough energy. The mRNA enters the smaller subunit which is then held by the tRNA molecules of the complementary codon present in the larger subunit. Thus, two codons are held by two tRNA molecules placed close to each other and a peptide bond is formed between them. As this process repeats, long polypeptide chains of amino acids are synthesized. Ribosomes are a part of the protein generating factory in the cell. The ribosome itself is a two-subunit structure that acts as a docking station for the transfer RNA that contains the amino acid that will then become part of the growing polypeptide chain, which eventually becomes the protein. In terms of structure, a ribosome is an intracellular structure made of both RNA and protein, and it is the site of protein synthesis in the cell. The ribosome reads the messenger RNA, termed as mRNA, sequence and translates that genetic code into a specified string of amino acids which grow into long chains that fold to form proteins. The genetic code contains the information of the protein manufactured from RNA. There are basically three nucleotides and four nitrogenous bases, which collectively form a triplet codon that codes for one amino acid. Therefore, the number of possible amino acids range to 4 by 4 by 4 which equals to 64 amino acids. There are 20 naturally existing amino acids. 
The genetic code degenerates which means that multiple codons can spell the same amino acid despite not being ambiguous. This was explained by the features of the genetic code, according to which a few amino acids are coded by more than one codon thus causing them to degenerate. Each codon codes for only one specific amino acid and the codes are universal irrespective of the type of organism. Out of the 64 codons, three are stop codons which stop the process of transcription and one of the codons is an initiator codon which is denoted by AUG coding for methionine. Molecular biology is a large and growing field, whose importance has yet to be fully realized. Experimentation figured prominently in the rise of molecular biology. X-ray crystallography allowed molecular biologists to investigate the structure of macromolecules. Alfred Hershey and Martha Chase in 1952 used phage viruses to confirm that the genetic material transmitted from generation to generation was DNA and not protein. Muller in 1927 used X-rays to intervene on and alter gene function, thus revealing the application of methods from physics to a biological domain. Many more advances in medicine, ecology and other areas will come out of molecular biology research as the science continues to grow and advance. The specific techniques used in molecular biology are native to the field but may also be combined with methods and concepts concerning genetics and biochemistry, so there is no big distinction made between these disciplines. Over decades, researchers have came up with a distinctive suite of laboratory methods, which are part of the molecular biologist toolkit and they include molecular cloning, reporter visualization methods, polymerase chain amplification, electrophoresis approaches alongside blotting approaches to assist in analyses of experimental outcomes. These techniques facilitate collecting, isolating and quantifying molecules of interest. There have been a number of major advances in molecular biology in the past few decades. New technologies either improve existing techniques or develop new approaches to old questions in order to generate information more quickly, easily, accurately or in a more easily repeatable fashion than existing methods. Some of the most powerful new technologies include polymerase chain reaction, PCR, advances, transgenic tyrosine gene knockout technology, and gene delivery to tissues or gene therapy. Given that these technologies can provide accurate high analytical capabilities, it is possible that research can shift from hypothesis-driven research to technology-driven research in the process generating masses of confusing data. It is essential that the strengths and weaknesses of these new technologies are understood to avoid the generation of large amounts of largely uninterpretable data. Molecular biologists of today are able to work with a broad selection of techniques which can provide accurate and reproducible information and, importantly, access to sophisticated bioinformatics technology that will enable the data to be meaningfully analyzed.